Now today, um, as we said, we're going to be talking or teaching on part three of overcoming fear. And we've taught thoroughly about the biblical basis for fear and the psychological, physiological, you know, what you would find in psychology books for reason for fear, what the Bible has to say about it. And so today we're going to do part three and we're going to touch on a review, but we hope that what we bring today is going to be a little bit more practical um, as far as how to overcome fear. And in the last two weeks, we talked about the biology of fear and anxiety, and we learned what fear, anxiety, and phobia is. And we'll touch on that later to be more specific about what each one of those are, because they're all different. And we talked about how there are three specific areas that actually create fear and anxiety in our lives. And one area is personal sin. We talked about Adam and Eve, how personal sin leads to guilt. And that is one area that creates fear. A second area is wrong thinking. In other words, we don't know the truth. Now, we have uh, Natalie that's watching with us today that does, um, she and her husband, Chemo, do inner healing. And what they do is they target wrong thinking. You know, what are the lies lies that you're believing? And a third area is generational sin. And that's the component. It comes down through generations that actually probably, you know, attacked your DNA. So we talked about those. And we also talked about 10 phobias from 2019, or the top 10 phobias. And as we said, we think probably those 10 phobias have changed a lot in 2020 because of COVID. And then we talked about four responses to fear. And you can go learn more about these if you listen to our other lessons. And those four are fight, which means uh, when all of a sudden fear hits you, and you start fighting um, because to fight that fear. And then there's flight. And that means that actually what you do is flight means you get to a point that you just run away. You run away. And then there is freeze, which means you basically shut down. Yeah, you you just shut down. Um, and that's a, 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 a dissociative defense. And then there's fawn which is really interesting. It means all of a sudden everything within you begins to do whatever it takes necessary to survive. So if you see a situation and or are put into a situation and it takes whatever it takes to survive. And, you know, a lot of our military have been taught that if they get into a situation that you do whatever it takes to survive. And then we talked about how to minister forgiveness if you're in the place of you have been hurt by others and you fear and you need to forgive. So Okay. Uh, that, that was week. Uh, then in, in week two, we uh, talked about the differences in fear that, that we find in, in the Bible. And just to, to review that quickly, uh, num- number one, was the fear of the Lord. And we said that that word and, and the meaning of that was a reverence, a, a reverent fear of the Lord. And then n- number two was the spirit of fear that will actually a- attack us. It, it can be a, a demonic attack, a demonic spirit that uh, will just come come up and go go after us. Yes. And... We, we then also talked about the necessity of abiding in Jesus, abiding in Christ, because then when we abide in him, we will know the truth. And as we've said, when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. And we have to abide in the word in order to know the truth. Yeah, and the thing is that we, we have people, and I find it when we have uh, altar ministry and stuff, People, there are people that know the truth, <laughs> but they're not doing it. They are, they are not obeying it. They are, they can quote it. Well, that's, that's good, but you've got to, this has to be a lifestyle. You have to walk it out. And then we, we went through Psalm 27 and the story of David when he was surrounded by his enemies. And Psalm 27 il- illustrates to us, how David dealt with sin. 
Yes, or with fear. Or I'm and, sorry, um, with uh, fear. Now we're going to review those four things that you'll find in Psalms 27. And they are, and it's just so interesting, the word seek comes up a lot. Um, so Psalms 27 taught us to seek the Lord in a time of need or a time of fear by affirming your faith in him alone. And you can find those in verses one through three. So uh, by affirming your faith, seek the Lord in the time of fear by focusing on the Lord himself. You focus on the Lord and that's in verses four through six. And then in verses 13 and 14 of Psalms 27, you continually seek the Lord by continually reaffirming your faith, your faith in the Lord. Lord, my faith is in you. And you can find this all through Psalms. And then number four, uh, David taught us in chapter 27, verses 7 through 12, when fear returns, seek the Lord by redirecting your focus to the Lord in heartfelt prayer. Yeah, I mean, the, this last one is very, very important because we can get so fixated on what the problem is. Take, for instance, this COVID. People are so fixated on COVID that, that you've got to get their eyes off of that and, and what the, the TV says and, and, Mass and all, and you've got to get your eyes back on Jesus yes. because he is really the only one who is going to be able to heal you, protect you, and, and give you that peace that surpasses all un understanding. So get, get your eyes off of what they, they say on the midnight or, or the evening news and get your Bibles out yeah. or watch some, something else. Yeah, we need to seek the Lord. So, uh, I mean, when we look at Psalm 27, the, the emphasis is seek the Lord. Right. When, when you think about Psalm 27, write in your Bible somewhere, the focus is seek the Lord. Yeah. And as we, we learned seven, there was also principles there of, about prayer. And I think if I remember correctly, there are seven principles of prayer one for every day of the week <laughs> <laughs> that are that uh, that are shown to us yes, and the yes. first one is prayer flows out of an awareness of our of our need yeah, we're aware of our need and you find that in verse 7 and then prayer is based upon god's god's mercy god loves us so so much he wants to give to us but prayer flows out and we need to be grateful and and tell them things yeah. and so that that's also in verse seven, and then prayer. When when we do pray, we should expect an answer. Yes, and that's in seven B towards the end end of the verse, and then prayer is a response to to God. I mean, we pray, we ask, and God answers, and and we then pray more and thank Him and other things. So. Yeah, and let me jump in there. I don't remember exactly how David said it because we went over it last week. It said prayer is a response to God. It's like and God is calling and David says, soul, seek the Lord. He tells his soul yeah. to seek the Lord, to cry out to the Lord. Okay. And then we, we also see that prayer should, should be seeking after God himself and not just after answers. I mean, we, we need answers. I mean, we, we can seek the things that are in God's hands, but he wants us to seek him. And, and we find that in verses eight and nine. And then prayer should always be our resource because God is, is the only one who is, is dependable. Yes. I mean, how many times have you been let down by someone who said that they would do something and they didn't do it? When uh, God says it, it gets done. And David acknowledged and that. David yes. acknowledged that in uh, verse 10. And fi finally, prayer is linked with our ob obedience, especially in, in a time of trial. Right. Uh, we've, we've talked about that, and uh, you, you and I need to be in the trial saying, Lord, not why, but how. What is it that I'm supposed to be le learning? Because in these, David taught us 
how he went back and forth between faith and anxiety, faith and anxiety, and yet his answer always was, the, the Lord. Yeah. Seek the Lord. Yeah, and I, that, that's refreshing because it's just not all the Psalms, and it is all the Psalms, but in this particular Psalm, David is talking about soul seek the Lord, and then he gets anxious again, and then goes back in soul and says, I need to seek the Lord. So he lets us know he was human. Yeah. He went from fear and anxiety to prayer and seeking the Lord back and forth. So David was definitely human. And how many times do we, how many times do we, like David, go back again and again and again to the things we know to encourage ourselves when fear and anxiety comes? I mean, I mean we have to go back. Yeah. I mean, I have I know for myself, and there have been periods in, in my life where I was strong in faith and uh, er everything, you know, as I uh, sought the Lord, things were good. And then the things of the world caught, caught up, and then an, another trial would hit, and it's like you almost have to start over again. Yes, it's true. So. But we do understand there are spiritual, emotional, and and physical principles of fear, and they do affect us. Yes. They do have an effect upon us. And today we're going to um, identify some practical steps. Now, remember, let's review what fear, anxiety, and phobia is. Fear is based on something that is happening right now, something that causes fear, an actual present danger. Yeah. Uh, a snake comes across the floor. A person walks into the room with a gun. You have fear, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's a it's a physical re reaction, emotional re reaction. Yes, but it's happening to now. right now. But anxiety is based on a fear of something that is going to happen or a danger in the future. Like right now, there's so much anxiety in the world. People concerned and worried about, am I or someone I love going to die of COVID? That right. is an anxiety. Right. And it, you know, it's a legitimate anxiety, you know, you know, worried, concern. Right. And then there is a phobia. And a phobia is an intense, out of proportion fear. And it's sensationalized. In other words, it means it's overboard. That's what a phobia is, right? Okay. Right. That's what a phobia is. That's what a ph phobia is. So let's now focus on an anxiety. Yes. Now, what do you what do you have? What do you do, or why do you have panic attacks? Yeah, for no reason. For no 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 reason. All of a sudden, fear grips your heart, and it's like your heart beats out of your chest and some people fall to the floor and it's just they can't breathe and it's just terrible. So so why? Why? But some, someone with a panic disorder may have these feelings of anxiety and stress and panic regularly and at any time and it's a natural response to a stressful or dangerous, dangerous yeah. <laughs> situation. Yeah. So, uh, so let's 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 look at three symptoms or causes that arise from a generalized panic dis disorder. Okay. Uh, we're we're going to look at three root causes, and then the first one is a genetic predisposition. Uh, great grandpa had this, and great great grandpa had it and my dad had it and so so on and so you you can see it coming down through the family line yes. there's something in the family dna that uh that when certain buttons get pushed on on the inside we have panic attacks yeah. and we don't know where they came from another one is anxiety from childhood i mean kids get picked on they they get bullied as they're coming to school. Their lunch is taken. Money is taken. And so all of a sudden, it's the fear of walking to school and the anxiety that gets built up that will bring then this, this uh, root cause of a panic attack. And then finally, it's a, a response to the challenges which we face in adulthood 
that we're facing right right now and also in the future. Right. Yeah, um, I can say the first time I ever had an anxiety attack, and I had no idea what it was, I was getting ready to take a uh, a job in the bank. I'd just become single, and I was going to a, a very high-level uh, job in the bank. And I had 22 employees and four departments to run, and I felt so inadequate. But yet the Lord just favored me, and the weekend before, I don't know why, I had a panic attack. I couldn't breathe, and I laid on the floor, and I put my feet up on the couch, and I prayed, and I went into a deep sleep for about 10 minutes. Now, that's the Lord. That's the Lord. And that was my first panic attack, and when I woke up, I was okay. But I recognized it was because of that that adult-facing situations right now. Now, both anxiety and panic stem from a spirit of fear. Now, let's look at what 2 Timothy 1 and 7 said. (coughs) Excuse me. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. Now, what happens is the enemy whispers lies to get us to make us worry, fear, and have anxiety. I mean, I had anxiety. (gasps) Am I going to be able to do this? I've got 22 employees. Am I going to be able to do this job? And the enemy comes in and says, you're not qualified. Even though the Lord says, I've qualified you. And each time we take our eyes off God as our provider. Right our sustainer, our healer, our deliverer, our refuge. And we open the door to anxiety, and with it often comes its ugly stepsister, depression. Depression. Yes, it comes right along inside. But Isaiah 55, 11 promises us this, and this is what Isaiah wrote. He said, his word, talk about the word of the Lord, his word comes from my mouth, And it will not return to me empty or void in some translations, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. In other words, Isaiah is saying, the word comes from my mouth to the Lord, and it's not going to return empty, but it's going to come back with what the purpose was I intended it. So if we pray to God or pray God's word to God and we remind him that there are things that we're depending upon him for, he's promised us in his word that's spoken by us and it's going to yield results. So we suggest reciting the scripture, not just to yourself, but back to the Lord because the Bible says his faith or the faith comes by hearing the word and the hearing the word of the Lord. Okay. You, you, by hearing. you speak it out loud. Yes. Okay. Speak it out loud. Speak yes. it out, out, out loud. Now, there are five so, things that we... There, um, there are, we, we look at five things yes. that, uh, that we know about an- anxiety. Yes. First of all, anxiety is unproductive. Totally unproductive. Totally. If, if, if we're preoccupied with worry and anxiety, how can we accomplish anything? I mean, we've got this video going around in our head, we've got this these words going around, and anxiety distracts us, and it traps us into a certain mindset, and we don't get anything done. We lie on the couch. That's why we talked about um, depression. Yes. We lie on the couch, and, oh, it's already dinner time. Oh, it's time to go, go to bed, and nothing has gotten done. Right. Second thing is that we anxiety renders us unable to enjoy the present moment. Yes. Uh, We are not present here and now when anxiety is taking place because we miss all that the present has to offer. Now, remember, today today is is a a gift. gift. Yes. Right. And that's why it's called... The present. The present. <laughs> yes. Um, for for some of you, you yes. may take a little bit because, yeah. but it's it's a present. Yes. But and it's given to you. I let me God. quote something that I had. I I got this um, <laughs> from somewhere as a teenager, and I had it on my wall, 
and it was from Robert White, and he was a writer, poet, and he said, I am not afraid of tomorrow. I'm not afraid of tomorrow because I've seen yesterday, and I love today. I love today, and that is a stress-free, anxiety-free person that says, you know what? I'm not afraid of tomorrow because yesterday was okay. And even if it was not, I love today. And once we leave today, tomorrow, it's today again. Right. It's today again. Right. So that's why it's called the present. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And number uh, three, Bill. And no number three is that Anxiety is non-compliant with God's Word. Yes, it goes against God's Word. I mean, the, the Bible is full of commands and, and uh, promises about how to deal with an anxiety. For, for instance, Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing. That's right. Well, that sounds good, but, uh, but how do I do that? Well, there are different ways, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we let our requests be made known unto God. And then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep our heart and mind in guard Christ Jesus. Guard our hearts, Jesus. and it will guard. So, so there are things that are there that, that will help us. Uh, there's an, another one, I, Isaiah 41.10. Fear not. Well, I don't remember how many times fear, fear not. 365 times, Bill, fear is in the Bible. You know, it says fear not. Why? One for every day of the, of yeah. the year. Yeah, I mean, God said that it to Joshua. God said it to many people. Yeah. Uh, the, the angels even said it to the said, people. Fear not, for fear behold. Not. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and, you know, there's in John 4, 14, 1, Jesus is saying, let not your heart be troubled. And then the rest of the verse is, neither be, be afraid. If you believe in me, you will also believe in my in the one who sent me or, or my father uh, finally in Joshua 1 1 9 do not be be dismayed <coughs> fear not fear not so so there are worry and fear and anxiety do do not line up with the word of God right it and does not and so we got to chuck out that type of thing and bring in what what is? Ang ang anxiety is also a foe of faith. Yes, it is. It's an enemy. It is a foe of faith. And why? Because we worry about things that we're uncertain about. I don't know what's going to happen. So, well, I guess I'll just worry about it. <laughs> but in contrast to trust in God is to know that he's in control, that he loves us, and he does have the best in mind for us. You know, see, we don't need to be anxious if we're confident that he's in control and cares for us. And you can find that in First Peter 5 and 7. And, you know, and even if we're going through difficult times, we have to put our trust in the Lord that he is control. And our responsibility, we can say, but look at all this stuff that's happening where our responsibility is to pray. And number five Anxiety is a waste of time and energy. As Bill said earlier, he said it's unproductive. But it is a waste of time and energy because if we allow our thoughts to linger in fears that make us anxious, then we miss, we miss out. We waste time and we miss out on the important things in life by not engaging with family, with friends, with God and those around us. And we waste our time by redirecting it towards something, as you said, that is unproductive. Right. So let's let's re review those uh, five. Anxiety is unproductive. Anxiety renders us unable to enjoy the present. Anxiety is non-compliant with God's word. Anxiety is a foe of faith, and anxiety is a waste of time and energy. Right. Really. Right. I mean, it's so. So let's let's look at a couple of scriptures uh, in. In um, Psalm 34, verses 4 and 5, the Bible says, says this, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Do not fear the king of Babylon 
of whom you are afraid. Do not fear him, declares the Lord, for I am with you to save you and deliver you from his hand. Now, the king of Bab Babylon is the devil himself. Or any enemy. Or any, en any enemy. enemy. But, yes. but the point is that that God is there to help us and render all these other things, you know. Void. Void. Yes. Um, Christ empowers us to overcome anxiety. You see, the scriptural solution to, um, to anxiety is you have to have a disciplined mind to focus on Christ. We talked about that last week. Um, cognitive <laughs> behavioral counselors would phrase this as identifying your unwanted problematic thoughts. Now, let's say that again. <laughs> this is what the psychologists... Now I know why they get such big bucks. Yes. In order... <laughs> not be able to say those words. <laughs> what a disciplined mind is identifying your unwanted problematic pro <laughs> prob problem thoughts. In other words, <laughs> what you know your thought, what your problem is, that's what you're focusing on, and that's a problem. But you've got to have a disciplined mind. Psychology finally caught up with what the Bible says, and the Bible agrees, or shall I say, psychology agrees with the Bible, and listen to what we say. Okay, 1 Peter 1.13 says, prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Psychology just said, discipline your mind. Well, the Bible says prepare your mind for action and exercise self-control. Get your mind in subjection. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven says, how do you do that? By loving the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Right. Colossians 3 and 2, set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. When everything, pardon the expression, is going to hell in a handbasket, don't look at the circumstances. Set your mind on things that are not on earth, but on things that are above. Philippians 4 and 8. Now, sometimes we need to put this scripture on the wall. Yes. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. And think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Philippians is saying, now Paul is saying, these things are worthy of praise, these beautiful things. So we need to just focus. Right. It, 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 it's a change of focus yes. from what is bad to what is good. And lovely and, and lovely and all of these things. Now, the Bible is telling us to set our minds also on uh, these things that are spiritual things. Or things that, that can, can make us calm, where we're looking for things that will bring us down because we get all worked up with anxiety and yes. panic and all this other stuff. And so re remember, we said that we must understand that God has hardwired us to respond in certain ways. And, uh, we, we'd gone over that er earlier and that fear will affect our bodies because uh, of the short circuits that kind of take place when suddenly 30 plus hormones get mm -hmm. dumped into our system and everything is raging on the in inside and there's no way to shut that down with the hardwired system. So, and so what we find is that fear will then affect our bodies because as I said, it's short, short circuits us. We have to change our focus from anxiety to the Lord Jesus Christ. And here are uh, ways that can help to deal with your anxiety, my anxiety, and cha to change our focus from your problems to giving them to the Lord. So, first of all, change your thinking. Yes. Change your stinking thinking. Your stinking thinking. And... True, uh, there, there's a word, uh, repentance, and we usually use that word for going one way and return and go the other, other way. The, the word in Greek actually means to change the way you think. And so by changing the way you think, 
you then change the way you act, and which changes the direction that you're going in. So, so we we change the way we think. We re, we repent. Um, we become more aware of the circumstances that will trigger our anxiety. What is it that pushes your buttons? Well, you're going to have to go and talk to some, someone because you you need to know what the triggers are. And I, I want to go back to where the psychologists say you have to have a disciplined mind. Spiritually, it's the same thing. We've got to know what triggers us. I'll admit, everybody that knows me knows how high-strung I am, and I do get triggered. And, you know, you just got to go, breathe. Breathe. Uh, breathe. You know, it, it uh, may be a mother-in-law. It may be a lot of things. Or but... just maybe caffeine. <laughs> maybe. Okay, also, you not acknowledge that Jesus is sufficient to help you and and free you from whatever makes you feel anxious. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have time during the day to go and do some inner healing and saying, God, what is it that's triggering me? And do you know, a little bit of self-inner healing. Then what you do is you just go to God and say, God, I know you're sufficient enough to keep me from being so anxious. So we and free me. Yes, I know, Bill. I try that. <laughs> okay, the other thing, number two, is be thankful. Studies have proven those who that are thankful live longer, happier lives. So maybe you want to start a gratitude journal. I mean, God has given us so much to be thankful for. And we number one, we need to write down, be thankful for the peace that God gives us that passes understanding. You, 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 know. you can sing the song, Give Thanks. Give Thanks. With a grateful heart. Or let's just sing peace, peace, wonderful peace. I never liked that song. Uh, but it will help you um, change your attitude from worry to peace because you're writing down the things that you're right. thankful for. You know, I, I always start out when I pray, Lord, I just thank you for this and this and this and this. And sometimes it feels so selfish. But these are all blessings from the Lord. They are blessings. Uh, number three, practice good self-care. Take care of yourself. Sleep. Eat properly. Bill, we need to sleep more. We <laughs> really need to sleep more. But eat properly. And sometimes, Carolyn, that means avoiding sugar and caffeine. Well, I don't drink that much caffeine and I don't eat that much sugar. It's just the way it reacts on me. But uh, it is a quick stimulus. Yeah. And it makes you go up and then you crash hard. Right. But, you know, something else. Have some fun. Yeah. Have some fun. Have some fun. Have some fun. Uh, num number four is make room for a joy. Yes. I mean, this is, this is where laughter and ha having fun, laughter will release in endorphins that will go in, into the brain and begin to, to, uh, level everything, level out. everything so, so that the fear and everything else kind of, kind of go, go, goes away. Laughter is good for all of us because our, our heart needs laughter. It's, uh, there are chemicals that get released, so make, make room for our joy. And then seek Christ, good Christian counseling to control anxiety. And, and this comes in the form of either what I would call prayer ministry, other people call in, inner healing. Uh, here at Revive, we have a, a team of people that can help with the in, inner healing part. And with the help of a, with good Christian prayer ministers, God will help you learn where your, your weaknesses are, where the pain and hurts are, and bring about healing. Yeah. And last but not least. Last but not least. Is pray. Yes. Pray. Pray, 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 pray. pray. Anxiety disorders are characterized by feelings of worry, anxiety, or fear that are strong enough to interfere with one's daily activities. And we talked a little bit about that. And our daily prayers, do you, do you realize they've actually proven now that when we pray, we can change our DNA? We were born into this world with a certain D DNA and there are things coming down through the family lines, but we can change that mm -hmm. by what we pray that will change our DNA. So, 
everybody else in the family line may have been like that, but we don't have to be be like. Right. Our, our daily prayers will change our DNA so that when we face fear or anxiety, we can immediately go to God's new plan and we're not we will not fear yeah. what can man do to us, you yes. know, type of thing. And uh, the plan calls for us to remain at peace because of his words of comfort that he, he brings to, to us. Yes. Now, we're going to give you some quick practical steps. And, Bill, if it's okay with you, I'm going to go through them very quickly. Sure. All of them. And then, because I want to just, get to a couple of these scriptures. Just, just make sure that the people can... <laughs> <laughs> can understand me? Um because I want to go to some of these scriptures, and I know you're really good in explaining these. Okay, so practical steps. If you were in prayer minister with Bill and me, uh, what we would do with our person is suffering from fear or anxiety from spiritual reasons or biological reasons or chemical reasons, because these are all legitimate. Uh, there are some basic things that we would tell you to do. Number one, you need to recognize where your fear and anxiety comes from. About the only way you're going to do that is to sit down and think about it or pray about it. Then, or have the help of some someone. Or have, have the help of someone. So recognize where it's coming from. Number two, recognize God is fully aware of it yes. and you're suffering. It did not take him by surprise. Here he knows. Number three, pull out your uh, your book, your list, or your, or your Google prayers. We talked about this book. Uh, I've had 50 of these I've given out. God's Promises covers everything for everyday needs. Confess these out loud. Another good source is who I am in Christ. If you do not have this, I would be happy to send it to you. Just contact me. Um, rebuke the devil and the demons of fear. This is very, very important that we recognize that we have all power over the devil, over the enemy, and we as children of God do not have to come under attack. So rebuke the devil. Pray and thank God you're a child of God that you're of sound mind, that you're healed, and give thanks for everything that God has done and for everything that God is going to do. And then as you get victory, testify. Testify. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, con con confession has to become a part of our life. Um, and we've, we've got some Bible verses yeah. uh, that, you know, you you can write the reference down and look them up le le later, but we're we're going to give it to you. Yeah, and if for some reason you need these, we can send them to you. But, you know, people today have telephones that they can pull them up with and they have Google and, you know, they have all iPads kinds of ways, and... iPads. But um, Exodus fourteen fourteen that says, the Lord will fight for you and you only have to be silent. In other words... Quit complaining and talking about everything that's the pits and let the Lord do the battle. Just say, Lord, I just need you to fight for me. Right. You all can also look in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 20, where it said, Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. Yes. The fear of God will that's, keep that's you from sinning. Reverent, that's, that's the reverence for, for God and who he is and the power that, that he has. You know, yeah. Papa's going to spank you. Yeah, and the thing is, is the Israelites realized God would do just that. And he said, don't be afraid. Um, if you fear God, you won't have to worry about anything because you'll do the right thing. Let's go to another one. How about this one, Bill? Jonah okay. 2 and 2. Jonah 2, verse 2, 21. I'm sorry, jo jo Jonah 2, verse 2. And it says, In my distress I called to the Lord, this is, this is jo Jonah, and he answered me from deep in the realm of the dead. I called for help, and you listened to my cry. Can you hear me now, God? Yeah, <laughs> can you? Yeah, I'm in this whale or can fish or me? whatever. Yes. And can you hear hear me now? I mean, you you and I may feel like like we're we're overwhelmed. I know a time in my life where I felt that everything was just kind of overwhelming me and just pushing me into a corner. And God was there. 
Yes. God God knew what was going, yeah. going on. Oh, there's one that goes with that. Uh, Bill, why don't you do Isaiah oh, 43, I, 2 and 3? Isaiah 40, yes. 43, 43, verses 2, 2 and 3. It says, when, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Yeah. So, so just like Jonah, he knew even in the belly of the well that God was with him. But yet Jesus said here, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Yeah, I mean, and whatever those waters are, I mean, uh, I don't think we're going to have a tsunami. But, yeah. but you know, there are things in our, our lives where where things just come to try and overwhelm us. Yeah. And it seems like, Lord, help. Yes, help, help. Uh, Isaiah 35 and 4 says, Say to those, this, this is the Lord talking, He said, Say to those who have an anxious heart. See, even the, the Word of God is even acknowledging there are people that have anxious hearts. It said, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God, he will come and save you. I remember I've had two or three friends that were going through divorces and they were actually having to fight for their children in court. And the situation was really bad because the mother was trying to do everything right and the father was coming against them and not doing the right things. And then we've had the exact opposite where men were in court and they've had to say, you know, to go back to the scripture, God, will you have vengeance for me? Would you give me recompense? And God has been there and done exactly that. You know, God will make sure there is justice. Yes, he will make sure there's, because he loves your children more than you do. How about the next two, Bill? Because they go right okay. together also. Uh, Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Remember, we talked about abiding and what our focus is. And he will keep us in perfect peace. And then Psalm 3, verse 5, it says, I lay down to sleep and I awoke again for the Lord sustained me. I mean, there there are times when you don't know what what to do, and it's it's called a sleep of sorrows, and you can find find yourself just curling up in a ball, going to sleep, and when when you wake up, it's like, wow, God has sustained me. Yes. So I think those are very good. It says He'll keep you in perfect peace, and you know Psalms or David said, "I lay down and I slept." Right. And there were so many people that wanted to kill David. They, they they were after him, and and yet he was able to put his head down in the cave or wherever he was and go to sleep. Yeah, let's look at two others. I'll read them together. Psalms thirty four four. I sought the Lord and He answered me and delivered me from all of my fears. And Psalms fifty six three. It says, "But when I am afraid, I will put my trust in You." Again, David saying, "Hey, you've got it. You've got it." Uh, oh, Bill wants me to do this one. Psalms 55, 22 through 23. It says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He would never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O oh God, will cast them down into the pit of destruction. Men of blood and treachery shall not live out their lives. I will trust in you. Yeah, I mean, it's nobody. The, the Lord is not asking you to carry on your shoulders, the burdens of just living in, in this life. And he's saying, cast your burden upon me and I will sustain you. Yes. Uh, Psalms 112, 7 and 8, I think this is very appropriate for today. It says, he is not afraid of bad news. <laughs> he is not afraid. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid until he looks in the triumph of his adversaries. When Bill was in that hospital room six years ago and the doctor said, we're going to send you home to die. I remember you saying that you weren't afraid of the news. Nah. You knew God had it. Whether he said, if God, you can heal me at home as easily as you can in this hospital. Right. 
And here I am, here six years are. later. Let's look at the New Testament. That was all the Old Testament. So those of you who goes, well, that's only the Old Testament. The New Testament have some things to say, too. Okay. Uh, yeah, and these are scriptures that should be familiar to you. Matthew 6 uh, and verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Yeah, I mean, if, we, if we're worried about our substance for tomorrow, don't. It says, you know, there's enough worry out there yeah. for tomorrow. Let's just, just concentrate whether on today. It's, whether it's COVID or the banks failing or your kids getting sick or whatever. Yeah, one that goes along with that is Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious, anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. I think that's really talking about healing. Or what you put your foot on, where you're going. Is not life more than food and body and more than clothing? In other words, is there not more to life than just worrying about yourself? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, John 14, 27 says, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind yeah. and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So... Do not be troubled or afraid. Amen. Amen. Let's see. Uh, we've got just a couple more. Um, okay, I think this is good because we're talking about fear. Let's do Hebrews, Bill, here. Okay. Hebrews 13, verses 5 through, through 6. It says, God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So you can come with confidence. The Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? What can people do? People can't do anything. I mean, people can do certain things, but, but the Lord is there to help you, to take care of you. And <laughs> as we've said, the worst thing that can happen is I go to heaven. <laughs> yes, that's the worst thing that could happen, heaven. <laughs> Unless you haven't made... Jesus, Jesus the Lord of your life. Amen. Okay, um, before we close up, um, this was our third part of overcoming fear, and we hope you've learned something. We hope it's been a blessing to you. And with that, uh, Bill, would you do the benediction? Sure. And we'd like to say thank you. We will not thank be here with you next in. month. Remember, we're on our way to Virginia to sell our home. Please say a prayer. And we'll see you when we come back in a month and tune in next month with um, Chemo and Natalie. It, it, if With your prayers, it may be shorter than that. Yes, <laughs> yes, it might be. But Lord, okay. with that, do the benediction. Okay, we're, we're, the, the benediction comes from Numbers 6, verses 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Peace be to you. May God bless you. you. Shalom, and we'll see you in a month.